like to say to our dedicated officers, charm classmates, oh, how special, and enthusiastic <laughs> friends. Good evening. Good evening. It is more than a privilege. <laughs> It is more than an opportunity. It is with deep humility that I am delighted to present to you someone with such great distinction on this June 9th, 2017. Mm -hmm. I am sure that you will agree with me that we are truly blessed for these 58 years of seasoning that we are receiving right now on this journey. Our speaker is such a warm, and sincere person whom we love. She has accomplished so much from grade school aides to mastery in social work, earning a PhD in organizational development. She has had a career in education, business, literary, and many social communities across the globe. Let me cite just a few of her achievements. Earlier, <laughs> earlier, she was the youngest dean ever appointed in the state of California and became the first female dean at Laney College in Oakland, California. In the British Virgin Islands, she served as Director of Community Development. She was also a professor at the University of the Virgin Islands in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Isles. Later, as CEO of Lions Property Management, she was selected by the United States Small Business Administration as Business Woman of the Year. <laughs> Our speaker has a passion now for health and healing alternatives. She engages in health issues and treatment. Our speaker Laura is leader, ambitious, unique, reliable, appealing. She has taken on many challenges and produced a fine family relationship, including her prize, her son, Kobe, who is a screenplay writer. Oh, this is a wonderful time for us to hear from our speaker and to learn what has and what is going on in her life. And now, my classmates, it is with love that I extend to you and yours, our dynamic speaker, 
our own Dr. Laura B. Lyons. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what a friend, what a friend. We were neighbors from the time I was 13 years old. Yes. And whenever there was trouble in my house, I went to hers. <laughs> and when there was trouble in my house, I went to hers. And that hasn't changed. When I left home yesterday from San Francisco without my suit for the night, she took me shopping today. <laughs> she is an amazing, amazing woman. And she has always been my role model. And I have to tell you this. The one favor that she asked of me she came to my room tonight and said, could you hook up my necklace? <laughs> and because my nails and the teeth were falling out and things were working, I couldn't get the necklace hooked up. And I was so embarrassed because she'd done so much for me. And I went in my closet and found a brand new handmade necklace from the British Virgin Islands. I love you so much and I thank you. And that's not all. I just want to tell you this. I, this is what I originally had for her before the necklace came up. Love. Love is a path of kind and it's not jealous. Right. Love right. is not rude. Love is not selfish. Love does not get upset with others. Love does not count savings and wrongs, but they count other people. This yeah. is a magnet from wow. Puerto Rico. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. For the woman who has communicated with me, who has kept this going, who's organized this, no matter what her issues have been, her health or whatever, Jackie Poole, yeah. thank you. I don't know how you all have kept up with me. I don't know how you knew where I was, but I thank you. I have to tell you, when I joined the Peace Corps, I was so hot as a kid. And people used to tell my mama all the time, she's going to end up in jail, she's going to end up in trouble, because she's so sassy, she's so hot, she's so loud. And then I joined the Peace Corps, and in those days there was no internet and all that. So they sent the FBI to do a background check on me, and they went around knocking on people's doors, and everybody went, we don't know. <laughs> and then they called my mom and said, we told you. The FBI. <laughs> So the Peace Corps took me anyway because they knew what was going on. <laughs> and then when I joined the Peace Corps, they decided to send me to Turkey. Uh, when I got the letter saying, you've been accepted in Turkey, I said, no, no, I don't want any food. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my classmates said, we know you failed geography. <laughs> so uh, when I, uh, the Peace Corps, after my training, they decided, somebody came in and said, oh, you can't send a black person to Turkey, they don't like black. So the Peace Corps called me in and said, uh, we, we, we're gonna send you home, and then when we get an opening in a black country, we'll call you back. I said, do you know where home is? <laughs> They're killing people, it was in 1963 when they just bombed the church. I said, I'll take Turkey. <laughs> Uh, and then I went to Turkey and I worked in, a, in an orphanage for abandoned children. Uh, and the majority of those kids were, so, all of them were soldiers' kids. So some were black, some were white. And the mothers who had them couldn't take them home with me because mm. in Turkey you couldn't do that. Mm. So I, they'd been there beating a black kid and they called me Chicka Latte Arne, which means dark, sweet mother. And then they'd beating a black kid and I walk in and they say, oh no, there's the other one. Stop beating me. <laughs> <laughs> there's the other one. I come before you tonight just so grateful. Mm. 75 years it took me to arrive at this spot. God has been so good to me. I used to line up empty chairs in my mother's kitchen and talk to these vac vacant chairs for hours. And my father said, see what's wrong with her. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got in 
invited to South Africa to speak in a soccer stadium audience. And my deceased husband, who was with me at our uh, 40th class reunion, said to me, sweetheart, that's what the empty chairs were all about. Uh -huh. That someday you were uh -huh. going to speak to a soccer stadium audience. He didn't live to see tonight, or he would know that this was what it was about. Yes, right. right. the momentous occasion. Yeah. Yeah. I've been validated by white people all my life, because if you can bring two sentences together without cracking a verb, you're intelligent. Black <laughs> <laughs> people know authenticity. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. know realness when we yeah. see it. Yeah. So when my classmates validate me, yeah. I'm good to go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. One of my dearest friends in here, who I used to hang out with, and she doesn't own up to it now, but we used to party. <laughs> Carolyn Mosley Hart. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want you to know how bad it is. Come get your gift. Who's taking pictures? <laughs> Another good friend in my family is uh, Lula Kate here. Yeah. My cousin just found out recently that uh, my cousin Carlene Howard, whose dearest friend is Lula, just said, we just found, she just found out you're my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Another woman who has made a difference and who cares and is committed to class of 59. Miss Tommy over here. Oh. Oh, oh, man. Oh, oh, man. 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 I was diagnosed with all the black woman diseases from eating all the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And I, had, I was diagnosed with diabetes, was number one. I went to the hospital in the Virgin Islands and they said, you're not gonna live. Doctor, don't even sit down in here. I don't want you to die in here. And my husband was reading an article in a Diabetes Express. And he brought it to me in the hospital. And by that time, I had lost my eyesight, a good part of it. Today, I don't even have to wear glasses. Wow. And uh, it was, the article was on brittle diabetes. That's for people who have a slight allergy to insulin. And in those days, that's all we had. We didn't have Google Fog and Metform, thank God. Because insulin is more like what the body puts out. Anyway, I called Dr. Lodewick's office, and I knew that I was going to get a secretary who said, you have to come here. He's in Birmingham, I'm in the Virgin Islands, and I'm that. Mm. And I knew they were going to say, well, where's your credit card? <laughs> and how he going to diagnose you? He ain't going to risk that. He ain't never seen you. This man came to the farm and talked to me for the longest. And he, I was, because he said, you are taking too much insulin. I think I was taking 30 units. And it was causing me to pass out because I didn't need that many carbohydrates. Yeah. And he just, no physician takes that kind of chance. And later, oh, and I told everybody, don't tell anybody that I got diabetes because I was embarrassed, I was ashamed. I told my secretary, don't tell him, I was him all the secrecy. Well, the president of the Diabetes Association was a nurse in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And she came into my room and said, thank God we got somebody famous got diabetes. <laughs> 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 we know you can help us. <laughs> so I became a uh, diab, and I still am. I'm now on a, uh, the University of San Francisco pays me to be on a diabetes advisory board mm -hmm. where I train and teach people diabetes is the easiest reversible disease in the world. Type 2. Type 2 is an eating disease. Anyway, when I became the head of the Diabetes Association in the British Virgin Islands, I called this man 
and the government brought him down there. He went into villages, he took care of people, he taught them things, and I am so proud and grateful to Dr. Peter Lodewick. Thank no you. Way, <laughs> thank you for being here tonight. And I want to thank you. My book, Lion's Guide to the Career Jungle, is in the back, and so is my, are my t-shirts, Success is an Attitude. I do take bad checks. Uh, <laughs> they can bounce. As long as you read the book, I don't care. Okay? Uh, they're $10 a piece, and I'll read a little bit from, uh, it took me five years to write the ways in which we sabotage ourselves. It was God who brought me this far. And I mean, the last few days has been so traumatic for me, and I've been losing things and dropping things and forgetting things. I said, now, is this dementia or enthusiasm? <laughs> <laughs> Am I getting Alzheimer's? Am I just excited about seeing my classmates? Let's blame it on excitement. <laughs> uh, and Charles McIntosh over there gave me uh, a dollar, a gold dollar, oh and then I married him off to Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to give them a little something from California. Oh, to oh. Thank you. Thank you. First man ever gave me a gold dollar. <laughs> 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 Born at Jefferson Hospital in Birmingham in 1942. My father was gone to the army and my mother was living with some family and friends and uh, she had me, she got pregnant with me when she was 15 and had me when she was 16. She went on to uh, become a living housekeeper. My father worked at a Sipico for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. um, he had, every time my mother got pregnant, his other one was pregnant. <laughs> all my sisters and brothers, all 14 of us got. <laughs> Some of us, yeah, and every time my mama had a girl, she had a girl. <laughs> she had a boy. So you know I'm, uh, you know, hey, you know, I believe in ooh. <laughs> um, but my father got through it. I didn't have a shot until the Ford Foundation decided to do a study on how black people could learn, and I was chosen for the study. They went to my counselor at Parker and said, name somebody that you feel given a shot who ain't got a chance could make a difference in the world. And she gave them Laura Brown's name. Uh, I went to Dillard University uh, on a scholarship and grant from the Ford Foundation. Mm. Graduated from Dillard and joined the Peace Corps. I spent one year in Nigeria and a couple of years in Turkey. I came back and landed in New York, decided that that's where I wanted to live. And the Peace Corps gave me a readjustment allowance. I took that and bought my first piece of property at age 23. And then I had a summer job in uh, Switzerland. And I posted an ad, there was no crates and all that in those days, just told friends. And my first husband responded. Uh, he came to my house that night and charming and talked and talk and walked and walked and did the crap. <laughs> and because I was a country girl, I didn't know anything about bunny clubs and nightclubs and candlelight clubs. And he knew it because he was from up there. So this little fool from Birmingham, uh, he decided to marry her and you won't have to pay rent. <laughs> Smart man. Uh -huh. And he did. As a matter of fact, uh, my good husband died and my bad husband is still alive. And I said, Dick, I'll explain. <laughs> Tell what happened. So uh, he played me for a fool. But the good news is there was some good things. That's what you, we each have to do. Look at the good that comes out of every bad situation exactly. in your life. All right. Look at the lesson that God is trying to teach you. And so um, he wanted to come to California because his ex-wife was chasing him. And I came to California, and as Evelyn said, I became the first woman dean in the state, not just the lady, the first female dean in the state of California, and the youngest dean at age 28. 
bought a beautiful home. And my husband said to me, uh, don't put my name on it because my ex-wife is chasing me. Well, that turned out to be a blessing. <laughs> and then one day I went to the car place to buy a stupid back up for $500. And, and the man said to me, Miss, I got an apartment building for you. I said, Sir, you crazy. I can't even buy this Studebaker. He said, But I, I, I can fix it for you. He took me to a realtor and they set up a loan for me to buy my first fourplex where the seller would carry the loan. And that's how I bought most of my property. They keep, they keep their name on the, on the loan for two or three years until I get enough equity to buy them out. And they put my name on the deed. So my husband uh, was dating another woman. And of course she assumed that the mansion I was living in and the car that he was driving and the, the, the American Express car he was taking her on was his. People always assumed that, but it was mine. Right? So she, he cheated and cheated and cheated and lied and lied and lied. And uh, finally, one day, he came to the house. He told me, he said, I'm coming tonight to get my things. I said, OK. That morning, I went to a lawyer, and I said, could you make me up a quick claim deed so that mm -hmm. he can sign up on the lawyer? He said, no man on the planet would sign this. I said, you don't know a black man chasing white tail. Just <laughs> <laughs> I said, just make up a claim <laughs> So he came that night. She's sitting out there in the car, no. and he said to me, which, spell that with a B, yeah. said to me, uh, is there anything I can do for you? And I said, you know, you could just sign a little bitty little piece of paper right here. Mm -hmm. Just sign a little bitty piece of paper. He snatched it out of my hand. Didn't even read it. Scroll the signature across it. But then, when their lifestyle began to go down, uh -huh, uh -huh. by that time, I had a nine-month-old baby. Oh, and the two of them kidnapped my child mm. and went underground. Mm. I, if I didn't believe in God, I would have jumped off the bridge. Mm. But I know a good and righteous God who has never forsaken me. Yeah. Mm. And I, by that time, I met Ed Lyons, and he said to me, I will get your baby back for you. And he used, to, he used to call me and let my baby battle on the phone. Mm -hmm. You know, and he said, give me, give me, give me 63rd Street. That was my biggest apartment building. Give me 63rd Street and I'll give him back to you. My son is 46 now and he says, Mom, you wouldn't give away 63rd Street for me? I said, heck no. <laughs> <laughs> I got you and 63rd Street. I hired a private detective. They found them in Ann Arbor, Michigan. They said they're on this street corner at this time. I went, I snatched my baby back. The FBI called me the next morning, because he really didn't believe I'd done it. The FBI called me and said, you got it? You tell us the truth, it's just a domestic dispute. If you lie, it's a federal crime. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I did? Ed Lodge and I went to a travel consultant. We got married in May. And I went to a travel consultant and said, if you could live anywhere in the world you want to live, where would you go? He said, Canada. We said, too cold. <laughs> he said, Australia. We said, we black. <laughs> he said, uh, Mexico. We said, we speak English. <laughs> so he said, well, where do, what do you want? We said, English speaking, U.S. dollar, no crime, no pollution, no taxation, no traffic jam, and black people. <laughs> and he said, British Virgin Island. <laughs> and that was my escape. I took my son and my husband, and I have to tell you, my uh, ex-husband took me to court to get custody of my son. He didn't want my kid, he just wanted mm -hmm. my money. Mm -hmm. He took me to court to get custody of my kid. He told the judge, I'm the better parent because I went to Stanford, she, I paid for him to go to Stanford. <laughs> I went to Stanford, she only went to Dillard and NYU. I'm the better parent because blah, 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 blah. And I said to the judge, he all of that judge, he just ain't the daddy. <laughs> 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 hey, there was no more reports. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> there was no DNA. <laughs> and he said to me, but he looked just like me. 
I said, look just like a dad. <laughs> what you do with this dad? I don't know. <laughs> no idea. But I know I carried it for nine months. Yeah. That's all yeah. I know. Uh -huh. What else happened? That's your business. <laughs> you go figure it out. So I went to the top, um, bought a lot of property. I bought a home in uh, Arizona not too long ago. And I went to a vacation home and I went to the a homeowner's office and I said, could you give me the card that I need so I don't have to stop at the security gate every time I come in? And she said, we don't issue uh, cards to people who only come once a week. Well, I was flying back and forth, you know, mm -hmm. California one mm -hmm. week. So I thought that's what she was saying. I said, oh, but this time I'm staying longer than a week. She said, well, then ask the family you work for. <laughs> she thought I was a maid. I said, I went from maid to maid it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's all right. It's taken me 75 years to get here, and God was good. I kept begging, and I said, Dear God, don't let me miss it. Uh, a coyote will reportedly eat its feet to gain control from a trap, but the coyote doesn't know about God. <laughs> the coyote reacts on instinct. We know that. Uh, the best prediction of future performance is past behavior, past performance. So you use that when you're thinking about God. Has he ever let you down? Mm -hmm. A woman was in the post office and they were screaming and hollering and she thought the post office had stolen her paycheck and she was going <laughs> to grab him and beat him. And I said, mess. Have you, has he ever let you down? Mm -hmm. She said, but if I don't find my paycheck, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And I said, it will never happen. Uh, every time people tell me about their depression, which I've been there, I tell them, there's, there's no psychiatrist in the world that can cure that depression. <coughs> Only one thing you need for depression, mm -hmm. bend them. Mm. Bend them knees, get them rusty, <laughs> down on Because I promise you, he will bring you to it. Uh, a black woman has to work twice as hard to get the benefits that a white woman gets. But this is the good news. God empowered us with that ability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Surely too. <laughs> God gave it to us. He knew that we, it was gonna take twice as much mm -hmm. for us to get half as much. Mm -hmm. A woman woke up one morning, she'd been living with this man for 10 years. And she, uh, he, he woke up and he said, baby, I had a dream last night. He said, what was it? He said, I dreamed I asked you to marry me. <laughs> she, he said, what do you think that means? <laughs> she said, it means you got more sense in your sleep than you know <laughs> <laughs> I thank God that A.H. Parker High School <laughs> and Miss Daisy Ray and Miss Evans and the class of 59 enabled me to have more sex when I'm awake. Uh, one of the top keys to success is consistency. You've got to be consistent in your behavior. You've got to be consistent in your actions. You can't be on time sometimes and late other times. You have to be true to your word. You can't say I'm going to do something and then make an excuse. I wrote another book called Excuses Are a Dime a Dozen. And another one that I love, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. Remember that. And here's another one I wanted to tell you. Relationships. The only reason to be in a relationship with a man the only reason for a man to be in a relationship with a woman. The only reason for me to have a friend like Evelyn. The only reason to be in a relationship. And I'm going to make this to the women. And it's this. Not the money. Not the house. Not the kids. No, no other reason than this one. You feel better about yourself in their presence than you do in their absence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you are happy when he goes out that door every morning mm -hmm. <laughs> and start getting jittery when it's time for him to come home, <laughs> <laughs> Ed Lyons, 
When I ran the car up the curb and bust the tire, he used to say, yeah, baby, I knew the, the government should have moved that curb a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> now when I tell my boyfriend I ran the car up the curb, and he said, you say you doctor lying? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how to drive? <laughs> you see, so I don't feel better in his presence. When, when I got home to Ed Lines, no matter how bad my day was, I know he was just going to make me feel better. I'd be upset about one of my coworkers, upset about one of my subordinates, upset about my boss. And he said, baby, five years from now, you won't even remember them. You won't remember their name. And he was right. <laughs> he says, don't let them upset you. I love you. Isn't that enough? Mm -hmm. He died of cancer of the blood. Mm. And in, in the arms of, he was with his son, who was not my son, but he just died too, my mm. stepson. He was with his son and he said, tell Laura I love her. Mm. I had an appointment in South Africa to do a major speech and I wanted to just cancel it and go into mourning. And he said, no, you cannot do that. He said, you got too many lives to change. You got babies to touch. You got hearts that you got to touch. You cannot do this. And then I was standing over his bed crying. And he said, you want to exchange place? <laughs> <laughs> so he said, go ahead and do it. <laughs> the next point I want to make to you, I just have 10, this is number eight. Consumer versus investor. Today I needed some new pants, a new outfit. And uh, Evelyn took me shopping. I said, no more than $10. <laughs> we got it for 12. <laughs> Not the jacket. This was a $300 jacket I got at Goodwill for five. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying to you, I am not a consumer. I, don't, I have never had a department store credit card. I don't believe in credit card. Wow. Never had one. <laughs> Cut them up. Cut them up. And it, we lived in a shack most of my life, but my father always had a Cadillac. The Cadillac was this big, the hut was this big. There was something about that picture that didn't make sense to me. Now I drive a 1988 Honda with 40 properties. Amen. Woo! You do the numbers. You tell me what. My maid, Dr. Nordstrom, and I convinced her one day. I said, how can you be a housekeeper making pennies a day and shopping at Nordstrom. She said, oh, it's on sale. I said, no, when they put it on sale, they just bring it down to where it should have been the first yeah. oh, <laughs> They ain't losing. You know what I mean? Right. So what I do is after some food pays $300 for it, and then they dump it at Google. Uh -huh. Go down there, all you got to do is dry clean it. Because <laughs> I'm not about looking rich. It's about being rich. All right. We spend too much time in Mercedes, in uh, what's Le what's the Le Lexus. Lexus. And they never go home to look closet for an apartment. Take it out of the closet. Take it on somebody else's porch and drive an Lexus. And I, you know, I teach at the university and I'm always telling my students that. I said, I bought my first property when I was 23. You got to start early. Mm -hmm. Stop, you know, just, just stop playing around. You want to be rich or you want to look rich? Mm -hmm. You want to pretend rich or be rich? That's up to you. Some of my family couldn't be here tonight because they have $150. <laughs> you know? And this is after they inherited millions that I never inherited anything from anybody. <laughs> but I knew I had to earn it on my own. Mm -hmm. And it also means sacrifice. Mm -hmm. We have to do sacrifices for our diet. We have to do sacrifices for our money. Like people said to me, but, but I eat for taste. I, I like that. I like pizza. I, I, I like this. I said, food is for nutrition. Sex is for pleasure. Go get some oh. sex. Oh. And at our age, we ain't got to worry about getting pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> There's no harm. <laughs> One of my best friends, she's 55, and she's been going with this man for two years. He's handsome, he's intelligent, 
he's rich, he takes care of her, he just has to save her home. And the other day he called her and he says, I have a secret I want to tell you, that I would help you for two years. And so he went to her office, she's a chief librarian in Berkeley, he went to her office and he called her aside and he says, my friend's been telling me, come tell you a secret, come tell you a secret. Well, the secret is that he, she is 55 and he's 70. But for two years, he fooled her on the feet and the sheep. Woo! <laughs> what the hell is that to be mad about? He allowed to fool me that he was 15 years younger. All the ones I know got erectile dysfunction. He's 15 years old. God trying to date me now. He has diabetes and he's losing his toes. And he's, seven, he's 80 years old. And he says, I got it in uh, Vietnam. I said, ain't no frost in Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> you're losing your toes because you got diabetes and you eat junk. <laughs> and they'll come towards me with erectile this morning. What you gonna do? I mean, uh, what we gonna do? <laughs> and you know what I do? I said, let me fix you and then we can talk. <laughs> and I can definitely reverse it. <laughs> Give it 90 days and it will be reversed. The other thing is, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot change what you do not acknowledge. Mm -hmm. Dr. Phil says that. You cannot change what you don't admit to. If you don't admit that your kids are users, mm -hmm. takers, and using you as an ATM machine, mm -hmm. you'll never change. Mm -hmm. Girl came to college the other day with a outfit on like she was Beyonce. Mm. <laughs> and I said to her, who do you live with? And she said, my mom. And I said, so what did your mom say when you put that outfit on this morning with all your boobs hanging out? And she said, my mom said to me that this is inappropriate. And I said, you wore it anyway? She said, yeah. Mm. I said, but why? She said, because I'm grown. Ooh. And I said, grown people don't live in my house. <laughs> 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 and if you live in my house and I tell you something is inappropriate, don't even think about it. Absolutely. You can't go out here representing me looking That's like right. that. Amen. And then everybody on the street saying, ooh, Miss Anthony, let that girl out there like that. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. You cannot change what you don't admit. Like the diet, we know better. We know a honey bunches of oats. I saw it on my cousin's table the other day, and he's got diabetes. Someone just read the box. It was one oat at the end. They all oats and honey bunches of oats. It's flour, it's wheat, it's sugar, it's poison. I don't eat anything where the label is more than three ingredients in it. That's number one. And number two, if I can't spell the ingredients, if I don't know what the ingredient means, mm -hmm. if I don't know what they're talking about, kind of boo, -boo, -boo <laughs> I don't eat it. Mm -hmm. And because, and, and then we've given up on so much. It's like, oh, I'm old, I'm decrepit, oh. Mm -hmm. yeah, like my friends, when I talk about sex, they say, ooh. One girlfriend said to me, you in denial about your age. I said, thank God. <laughs> I will never claim old. Don't like the word, don't like elderly. They were talking about the woman on TV the other night, and she was 75, and they said, an elderly lady. I said, are they talking about elderly? <laughs> are they calling me elderly? <laughs> The only time I like elderly is when there's a discount. <laughs> <laughs> then I claim it. I'm elderly and uh, Don't use excuses. Genetics. There's no such thing as a genetic disease. No such thing. We are born with a genetic propensity. I was diagnosed with diabetes gestational. My husband, my son's father has diabetes. My son's likelihood of getting diabetes is much greater mm -hmm. because that's his genetic predisposition. Mm -hmm. But he was not born with diabetes. Mm -hmm. He ain't going to get diabetes because I had it. He ain't going to get that. He's going to get diabetes from drinking Pepsi. Mm -hmm. He's going to get diabetes from eating pizza. He's going to get diabetes from loving sushi. He's going to get diabetes because I used to go to his house 
and he had those uh, things hanging on the door, of the art. He just little order thing, you know. He said, Mom, choose one. I said, you don't really believe that. And then at 40 something, he started getting, uh, you know, like the, 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 the disease, and he changed. Mm -hmm. And today, it's, it's totally all, excuse me, all disease, all disease, all disease is reversible. Why? Because God made our bodies like that. But our body spend all of its time metabolizing. Because if you eat a piece of steak, it takes 48 hours to digest it. You eat an orange, it takes 15 minutes. You eat an apple, it takes an hour. You eat a banana, it takes two hours. You can just go online, and don't, don't take my word for it, and tell you how long it takes to digest food. So we want food that's full of water, easily digest, so the body then will swift over and start going towards healing. When I go to South Africa, they take me out there, no safaris, and I see the lions and the tigers, and the, they ain't no vet out there. And the man who's driving will show us, you know, oh, that tiger over there is sick. Mm. I said, what are you doing? He said, oh, they not heal themselves. <laughs> they go over the corner, and they don't eat what made them sick last night. Mm -hmm. Now with us, we eat a pizza tonight, and make us sick as a dog when we wake up in the morning and finish it up. <laughs> My best friend loves pizza, and he ate a pizza one night, and he was vomiting and defecating at the same time. <laughs> and so he said, I swear to you, I'm never going to have another pizza. <laughs> the next day, when he ordered a pizza, I said, I thought you told me you were never going to have another pizza. He said, oh, I figured out it wasn't the pizza. It was I took my medication wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have, you know, I have relatives. And I call them, and I say, and they, I know they got disease. They got this. They got that. They got, and they eat chitlins. <laughs> and you know what my, what my relative said to me the other day? I said, girl, you can't be eating chitlin knowing what you got. She said, but I clean them myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I know they clean them. She doesn't know they're inherently nasty. You can't clean them. You can't clean a, kidney, a chitlin. It's nasty. It's bad for you. And you know, people say to me, but this is our culture. We grew up like this. But we're more intelligent and educated than my mama. My mama made the best potato salad, the best barbecue ribs, the be and don't start licking your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best peach cobbler, but that's why she's dead. And she used to get a heart attack, heart attack, heart attack, come on, heart attack. And I was a child and I said to her one day, mom, do you think that maybe there's a connection between the heart attacks and your diet? And she said, I know that's not true because I wasn't eating when I had that heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's the education that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. And when I declared myself a vegetarian, my mama said to me, you think you're white? <laughs> that white folks oh. look. So the only time she saw broccoli and cauliflower, oh, was the white lady. Right, right. And I said, no, I don't. I, I, I just, I don't feel it like that anymore. My brother-in-law took me out the other night, and he was trying to explain to the waitress that I'm a vegan. And he said, Miss, no, 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 she can't eat that. She a pagan. <laughs> 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 so don't, don't excuse it. Make. Be willing to make sacrifices. You don't think I want a hot dog? You don't think I wanted to eat that chicken tonight? I want what you want. We get food addictions when our mother gives us that first teaspoon of girls. It's food addiction. And they used to put three little boxes of popcorn in our mailbox. But you know, I'm smarter than that now. I know ain't no, ain't, no, ain't no corn popped inside of popcorn. <laughs> Read your label, and there is no food on the planet worth dying for. And know my friends tell me, you're going to die like all the rest of us that rabbit food. You didn't eat rabbit food, but you're going to die like everybody else. I said, yep, but I'm going to still have my groove on. <laughs> <laughs> hey. And that's what it's all about.
It's not about longevity. It's about quality. Right. Yeah. It's about hey, y'all was in the institute that I'm hoping you'll come to the Hanwood Institute. I have flyers back there. And I was roaming around at 2 o'clock in the morning in the kitchen looking for something to eat. And the director saw me and she came over to me and she said, Laura, when you're roaming in the kitchen for food at 2 in the morning, it ain't food you're looking for. You're looking for love. And that's what we've all done. We have displaced and replaced love. All of them. I live on the dating sites. Love. Them. I live on the. Uh, our time, uh, seniors.com, uh, jews.com. I want to start a site of my own for widows and widowers because I find most divorcees are bitter, whereas widows and widowers tend to be compassionate. Mm -hmm. But when I meet a divorcee, oh, she took the house. <laughs> yeah, she took the kids. Yeah. And then they'll tell me she was a witch. Girl with a B. Hey, you got another one. Don't go there. And the majority of them that I meet today, they looking for. Like one, he wanted to come and live with me. He says, I want to come live with you and pay half of everything. I said, no, baby, you come here, you paying all of it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can do bad on my myself. <laughs> I do not need you to do bad. So I'm going to close by saying this. Medication is worse than the disease. That's right. My husband did not die of cancer. He died of radiation. So I'm asking you to always find an alternative and to come out of denial. We're in so much uh, denial. My favorite poem in my book, Lion's Guide to the Career Journal. Took me five years to write this. Um, I hope you'll purchase one tonight. You can also order them. I hope everybody has my card. I want to stay in touch. And you can see me on YouTube. You can see me on website. And you can see me on Facebook. And most of all, this is an occasion that I shall never, ever forget and that I will always be thankful for. That you called me here tonight. I'm exhausted. I flew from California. I didn't bring my the suit I bought. I can't get the stains off my teeth. Uh, I'm tired. But most of all, I met up with you. Yeah. And I'm grateful. Life is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Accept it. Life is a gift. Know that God gave it to you. Life is hard, but there's nothing that you can't beat and overcome. Life is an adventure. Dare it. Life is a sorrow. Overcome it. Life is a tragedy. Face it. Life is a game. Play it. Life is a mystery. Unfold it. Life is an opportunity, take it. Life is a journey, complete it. Life is a song, sing it. Life is a promise, fulfill it. Life is a beauty, praise it. Life is a struggle, fight it. Life is a goal, achieve it. Life is a puzzle, solve it. That poem was written by Les Brown who I just saw again, and we should be cold motivational trainers. Mm -hmm. The good news, brothers and sisters, fellow classmates, is when God breathed the breath of life into you, he gave you the power right. to meet the challenge. Thank you. All right. There we go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.